Land frontier, and these are protective tutelary spirits who are often honoured in order to ensure their aid for the health and providence of the land. This can be a small area of land or it can be as large as a whole country. They are often seen as the indwelling spirits of particularly magical and beautiful and wild areas. Some may inhabit a rock, or some may inhabit a woodland, or some may inhabit a waterfall, or even the unploughed corner of a field. In Britain, it was a tradition to leave a corner of a field unploughed, and this was to accommodate the nature spirits. And this area was called the Devil's Plantation, and it was renowned to be a particularly magical area for cunning people to perform their arts. The name white is quite familiar to us and this is an Anglo-Saxon word but in Norse it is landvaitia. Some people say vatia but to me I think it's more vaitia. Yeah, that is, that is what it means to me, vait. Um, so it's if you have any bones about how you say that let me know but I'm going to say Vaitia because it sounds more right to me. So in many ways the spirits control the blessings and the health of the lands. In English we might call them whites, in Anglo-Saxon they were known as whites, in Norse they're known, known as Landfitia and um, also in later English I've heard them called wards or ward sprites. Um, it is also said that if they're particularly malevolent and they haven't been honoured or in some way upset, then they are no longer wards, they are yarthkins, which are slightly more malevolent beings and able to cause some damage and harm. In many ways these spirits control the safety and blessings and fertility of the land. In English we might call them fae or fairies or brownies or hobgoblins. So the name Vaitir or white has an original meaning that means a creature or a thing, often thought to be a supernatural thing. It comes from a proto-Germanic word whitis and an earlier Indo-European word wekti, both of which mean a thing or an object. Therefore a white is seen as a thing in the landscape. Also it's seen as a particular thing in the landscape such as a rock or a waterfall. So the rock or the thing has a supernatural spirit which is seen as a guardian of the land and the spirit of a place. 
it is often seen as a lesser god. In many ways, one of the gods who is closer to our human world, a thing that is dwelling alongside us and easier to contact. Like the Tooth of the Danan, they are seen as invisible neighbours who have gone to dwell in another world which is parallel and closer to our world but in some way hidden from us. In many ways the Tooth of the Danan were seen as ancestors of the Irish um, but it's debatable whether whites are actually ancestors or something else. In Icelandic they are called the Huldafolk or the Huldrafolk and these mean hidden people. Now there is a creature in myth who is called the Huldra as well and she is a beautiful forest creature and she is beautiful from the front but from behind she has a hollow back like a hollow tree trunk and a hidden tail. So in many ways she's quite a frightening but alluring creature. She's also known as the Skogsgra and this means a forest creature. Now the name Ra is another word for a white or a Vaitir and this is quite a common ending of a, a name for a white. In the Sami they were known as Radi. They were known as the supernatural entities of an area and it was quite a wise idea to develop a good relationship with them. The Skogsra or Huldra is known in Sami as Ulda and this is the goddess that we now know as Mother Hulda and they are one and the same being. So it would seem that Mother Holder was originally a forest creature, a spirit of the forest. If treated kindly and with respect, then the Holder could be especially beneficial to humans. It was said that they were particularly fond of charcoal burners, and charcoal burners could go to sleep at night with the safety and knowledge that if anything went amiss then the holder would wake them and for this favour in return they left her food and offerings for her good blessings. The Ra were the guardians of an area and a male Huldra was called a Huldra Kull and despite the reputation of the Huldra being beautiful and seductive, the Huldra Kal were actually quite frightening in appearance with long spiky noses. So alongside forest spirits there were other names for other spirits that inhabited different areas. So a freshwater spirit was called a Syura, a saltwater spirit was called a Havsra and a mountain spirit was called a Bergsra. In Norse they had many different names. A Landvatir was a nature spirit of the land. A Falvatir was a mountain spirit. A Sjölvatir was a sea spirit. A Skogsvatir was a forest spirit. A Vatnavatir was a water spirit and a Husvatir was a house spirit. So some people would consider them similar to elves or barrow dwellers, but the name white actually originally meant something that was living and it referred originally to a human being, a person, um, and so it was very definitely a living being. And so there's some dispute as to whether the elves, the barrow dwellers, the ancestors and the spirits of the dead are the same thing as a landvaitir. 
and there is one story um, of Goat Bjorn who when he moved to Iceland was befriended by the spirit of a rock and this rock spirit was very beneficial to him and he prospered in hunting and fishing and he was able to be seen with these spirits wherever he and his brothers went. Now the fact that he was befriended by a spirit before people even got to Iceland would indicate that they weren't actually ancestral spirits or ghosts or barrow spirits or elves but in fact spirits of nature. So it was Norgal's custom then to give offerings and to receive advice from the spirits of rocks or waterfalls or woodlands. In Iceland the Landvitir are still taken very seriously and there are rocks that are left to grow wild um, where they will not mow the grass around the rock and children are forbidden to play on the rocks. And there's quite a famous story of um, when they came to build an airport in uh, Keflavik that a foreman actually dreamed that a woman came to him in his dream and asked him to delay the work on the airfield until she and her family had had time to move out. Well the foreman took this dream quite seriously and much to everyone's chagrin he did actually delay the work um, and then two weeks later he had another dream and the same woman came to him and she told him that it was okay to continue the work as she and her family had now moved out of the rock. So the Hawks book makes mention of this belief um, and it mentions a priest who belittles the locals especially the foolish women for leaving offerings at rocks and other wild and natural places in order to ask for prosperity and abundance and blessings on their households. So the elves and the Landvater in my mind are two slightly different things. Whereas the elves are ancestral spirits, they are usually quite predisposed to help human beings, especially those of their own ancestral line. Um, but it could be said that the Landvater are not necessarily predisposed to help humans. In fact, they're just guardians, they're guardians of nature and they're guardians of a place. Um, and so if you work beneficially with them they may help you and it may help to cultivate a better relationship with the surrounding area for your beneficence. So another being is the Husvatir and this is the Vatir who guards your home and like the land Vatir they are given food and honoured and blessed in the home, although they're slightly more domestic spirits. Um, their place is the fireside and this is where they're given offerings. All offerings would be left out in a barn. And they would look after the property and look after the animals. And this was the notion that in some way we share the space of this who's fatir that um, we have come to inhabit its land and so we work alongside it to ensure the harmony of the place we're living in. Um, the land fatir are slightly more outside the boundaries of the human world and wilder um, but they could still um, influence our hunting, our fishing, our providence and so they were blessed too although they were slightly less under the control of mankind as we might consider the friendly house Vitir to be.
So in nature, land vetia are seen as inhabiting particularly powerful spots, particularly beautiful spots, and of having a special significant presence in that landscape. Now, the famous story goes of how um, Harold Bluetooth wanted to invade Iceland, and so he sent his shaman in the form of a whale to go and inspect the land and try and find a place that would be good for an invasion. But this shaman, wherever he travelled in spirit, he would meet and encounter a powerful and frightening being who drove him back from the land and who was backed up by a horde of land vitea. So he met in turn a dragon in the east, a giant in the south, a bull in the west and an eagle in the north. And the land could not be approached while under the protection of these powerful figures. And even today on the coat of arms of Iceland, you'll see the four land vitea who have a very significant place. And this is very sympathetic magic to protect Iceland and to work in harmony with the spirits of the land there. It is also said that the law forbid anybody to approach Iceland with a dragon's prow on their boat or even with their mouth open and yawning and this was written into the law in order to not frighten away the land vetir from the land of Iceland and to um, not offend them in any way. So it would be beneficial for us to remember this relationship with these land fighters or these land whites. Um, they can be very good to us if treated kindly, but they can be totally devastating if they are angered or if they are against us in any way. And in our modern world we live far removed from nature in many ways and um, we do not sense really the powerful presence of certain places and so it would be a good exercise to try and find some of these areas where we think a Lanfitia may exist. Things like large rocks or boulders, certain streams or a lake or a tree in a park. Um, and if you can sense a particularly powerful presence in that area then it would be very wise to go and make it some kind of offering um, to say hello, to give it respect, or even as they do in Iceland, to build it a little house where it may dwell. So thank you for listening, I hope you found this some use and it's been of some interest to you. If you did like this then please like and subscribe or share um, or put a comment in the comments box below. Um, if you didn't like this, let me know and I'll try harder next time. So thank you again and I hope to speak to you all again soon. Cheers, bye.